Hi all, welcome to a new video. It's not about a new, it's actually a concluding video of the previous videos. So let's see a quick um, overview of the database design process. So all the things we discussed so far, something we will try to summarize here. Okay, so that is um, the final, uh, the entire database design process. Okay, so now we will see the individual blocks in detail from the next video session onwards. So that is the idea. Now, uh, so just for a quick summary, uh, summary like um, or uh, recalling, what is a database management system? If I am asking you such a question and I am giving you options like uh, the first one is saying that it is a collection of data stored on a computer, a collection of related data representing facts uh, that have a meaning in the real real world, a software system allowing users to create and maintain a a database and database system um, allowing users to define web portal interfaces etc so you just read it and uh, try to read the answer its answer is already given it is option c okay and now uh, just convince yourself why this this is the correct answer so if you understand what is database management system and uh, how it is different from database and all you can answer it easily okay so a collection of data stored in computer is typically we call as database okay so this is not dbms software right collection of related data so definitely the, the, this is just a random collection only um, for uh, for it to be a database it should be related also but anyway now also the definition is not going to the dbms software it's uh, representing some real world okay so again still it is uh, with the database only right now here it is saying that it is a software system that allowing users to create and maintaining database so dbms is a software that allows the users to create and maintain the actual database right so this is the definition and uh, one more wrong statement is given a software system again okay allowing users to define web portal interfaces and interact with the database so there is nothing like a portal web portal and also that is different thing okay so dbms is particularly for creating and maintaining the database so mm, it's a software for that hope it is clear now if you are looking at the database design process uh, we already seen what is this conceptual model logic uh, physical model and all but now it's uh, just a pr as a process i am telling you you know just like any software development this also gone through uh, some phases like uh, initially you have to talk with the one who uh, your customer right for whom you are developing the software so you have to collect the requirements so for, uh, before this requirement analysis there is a step called the requirement gathering right the requirements are to be gathered from the uh, user right for, for whom you are developing the database so as a designer point of view you think about it you one person is approaching you and he is asking like uh, uh, i want to maintain a university database or i want to maintain an employer database right so as a designer first you have to understand the requirement right so by uh, talking with them um, have you can have a group discussion uh, some kind of brainstorming sessions and all and by that you understand clearly what is the requirement he is uh, having you can in interview him many things are there even in software i think mm, that uh, software engineering itself there is another uh, subject software project management something and that time you will see all those things in detail anyway so something like that you have to gather the info requirement first then you have to analyze it and sometimes you may feel that these uh, some of the in, uh, information given by that particular user is uh, not relevant that you can eliminate right something or uh, something uh, irrelevant but it is uh, not possible for you to Im uh, give um, implement and that uh, so maybe some exaggerating requirement he is having so that those things you can filter out right so that is the requirement analysis phase and um, you have to after analyzing you have to clearly uh, maybe you can create some documentation also in software development we, we will follow same thing you can follow for the back and design also something like a software requirement specification document some SRS documentation you can prepare and you can tell him yeah these are all the requirement you said and we are okay with that if you are also okay we can proceed and after uh, finalizing the requirement uh, by a very detailed analysis of it you can go for the conceptual design okay uh, conceptual design means what one second okay so the second phase is conceptual design and we already know for conceptual design is something that is very closely related with the user okay so we don't uh, need too much technical jargons and all uh, but at the same time we should be able to map to the actual implementation so that kind of an intermediate representation we need so conceptual design we are using some pop something called a er diagram hope you remember entity relationship diagram so here in uh, he i will show you a typical structure of it and we will we are going to see it in detail in our upcoming videos 
and then after we can go for uh, the logical physical and uh, design and the we, we can think about the security aspects and all other things so this is the typical flow how a database design process is going and in between there are many things like uh, some kind of normalization we will do by which we will standardize the database and all right um, some unwanted uh, redundancy etc we will try to eliminate okay yeah so um so from uh, some video lecture i taken it like a screenshot anyway i find it uh, useful like uh, that's why so it may not be readable anyway I, I just listen to me and follow it so in this green color you can see analysis specification design and implementation and here uh, so that is a typical flow this is not only for this database design software design also we are following something similar to this okay so initially we have analysis in the sense the requirement analysis so requirement analysis what you can do is you can take case studies right so when uh, like uh, for example for uh, uh, CET uh, campus we need to maintain data so th those things are already there but still if you are uh, something trying to come up with uh, uh, something like that so what you can do is you can look at the databases maintained by other colleges uh, maybe IADs and NIDs and you can study them and you can understand clearly and accordingly you can go for the design uh, of our campus okay so that about it so that is why we are using this case studies and all uh, by which we will uh, gather requirement and we will analyze and uh, fix them then mm, the specification right so how so this is specification is actually the conceptual uh, specification which is dealing with the user and where we will use this entity so in, in this box you can see entity relationship model okay and there is one more word extended uh, there is er model and eer model extended is, that is a slightly updated version of the er model anyway so you can use this entity relation model or extended entity relation model for specifying the requirements and all like uh, now you can uh, show to the customers like uh, so this this is how the database will look like and these are all like uh, we have an entity for student we have an entity for the uh, course uh, faculty and these are all the attributes and how these things are related so like that you can specify very clearly now next we have the uh, design that is the actual uh, implementation related design so in so in design basically we have this uh, relational model right so that time we will use something called so these things are actually so this is something like an overview of what things we are going to see so that is why i taken this uh, slide even though it is slightly not readable uh, so here you can go for something like relational query languages are there using which uh, the relational modeling you will do and relational query languages the relational algebra is there little relational cal calculus is there and the practical one SQL is also there we will go through all those things and we will do the actual physical design okay uh, actual uh, design that is uh, very close to the implementation and we will do some more filtering after this so that, that that is the last phase so before that here it is almost finalized right the ev everything now in between there is a step uh, where we have to map this er model or eer model extended entity relation model to the relational model uh, so that mapping will also happen at this phase okay now in the final implementation we will do something this is very important again in a um, i think in third or fourth module or uh, one big area is there for uh, one complete module or half of it is there for normalization and that we will understand clearly so there is it's a survey by which we uh, standardize our uh, things right so we will uh, filter out uh, all unwanted things and uh, we will make a very precise um, database design without any redundancy and also some kind of redundancy elimination is basically happening in normalization we will see that and then uh, so now everything is clear right so now it's a time like how this user will interact with the database it's created it's map populated and to be normalized and everything now uh, database is in a very clear way now user have to retrieve data insert data delete those things he has to do right so that time we have the user interface so by which we will be dealing with the database now uh, the Finally, there will be some uh, optimality constraints and all. Some uh, we will do something for making it more and efficient, more efficient. I mean, particularly that efficient access of the data, that access path we saw, right? So for that, we will do some efficient indexing structures. We will implement, and there are many other small small things are also there. But anyway, this is a very uh, quick summary of the entire procedure, entire database design process. Okay, so I find it interesting. So that is why I taken here. So starting with the analysis, specification, design, and implementation this uh, case studies for understanding requirement er modeling for conceptual design then the mapping from er to relational model 
so once you get the relations uh, which you defined using relational algebra calculus sql and all you can go for the normalization and finally the user interface by which user can interact with your database and the access path and index in those things yeah so building an application with the dbms so this is a typical procedure like it says all those things i explained already requirement gathering is needed so it ca you can depend on some pictures natural languages etc uh, normal communication many things you can adopt for gathering information uh, or case study many things are there then requirement modeling after analyzing you have to model it using some conceptual data model like er model decides what are all the entities needed and uh, should be part of the application and how they are related to each other and the schema design and the implementation uh, so the final uh, schema decide on the set of tables i mean in relational data model so here mainly for implementation we are using rdbms relational database management system where information is represented in the form of tables okay and their attributes so it create the um, tables in the database system right so first you have to decide what are all the tables and uh, what are all the attributes of the table after deciding you will create accordingly and then you will populate it with the data uh, so the we will insert records and tuples into, into it so this is the this database design uh, process it, it goes through the stages so uh, initially we have a problem with this and from that problem we will do the requirement uh, collection and analysis then conceptual schema logical schema and physical schema and these things you know that three schema architecture right so the same thing only so that is something theoretical concept practically we are implementing it using ar model relational model etc so same three schema architecture we are following here with uh, some uh, add-ons so here requirement analysis uh, data and conceptual design okay and these things are clear now this is how a typical er model uh, is looking so i am just telling you so you don't have to think about this in detail anyway we are going to study much about it's this rectangle you can see the entities here we have a student entity uh, maybe faculty or professor something like that uh, course entity and for a student there will be some some kind of id social security number something like that as a name uh, what category he belongs to for there is a course id course name uh, in which quarter it comes like uh, maybe uh, in foreign countries are like uh, here you can divide into different four quarters and in which quarter this course is offered like something like that and faculty again professor um, is uh, which office he belongs to name um, something faculty and all <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway um, he's a faculty in the sense he's dealing with what like that maybe uh, the meaning and all is there depends on uh, that actual implementation so it is just an example only you can give your own fields and all and how they are related that is by this uh, diamond kind of structure you can see that the student is taking a course right the student takes a course and the professor advises a student and professor teaches a course also like that we can think of different relations right all all of them so this is something very user friendly right so even uh, those without any uh, technical knowledge can easily understand this so this this is just like the plan of a building okay so this is our er model which uh, which is for the conceptual design okay now hmm, the next level the representation or the implementation model where you can see this in a more implementation related but still it is not far away from the user so this also you can interpret easily same thing i mapped like uh, some relations or tables okay well, that uh, exact meaning of the term relation i will tell you when we are discussing rdbms okay now table okay some table so uh, you know ssn 9 category those attributes you converted into columns and you filled it with the data but if you are looking here here actual data or instances are not there so this is a model right so by which you understand the structure after that in a, when it comes to table the data will also come there the instances will also come so okay uh, so different ssn name and those things are given and uh, there is something called uh, the relation takes is shown here this particular student taken this course so course details are also there professor is missing anyway that also you can add a course id name quarter and all like uh, in winter or in fall season like that and now that relationship also you can uh, represent using this table like uh, in uh, this particular student taken this course so like that you will represent okay so actually there is a formal way by which that er model is mapped to a relation like this and that we will study systematically in uh, uh, in our second module okay 
so now you got an idea like lo- feel like how this er model is looking how this relation model is looking so that is the uh, intention i am having so the conceptual model er model it looks like this uh, another example say a product uh, a person uh, buys like that a person buys a product product name and price and a person name and so this simple example then we you will map this product into a table person into a table uh, if you want you can map so this buys also like that so this is a relational model uh, right and and we will filter it out so functional dependency don't worry about this term right now we will see that during normalization procedure i will explain you anyway so relational model is shown and the normalization we are actually decomposing the table into small small tables in such a way that uh, we don't want any redundancy so if you are looking at the table as a whole some information sometimes you want to repeatedly store that you will be eliminated by decomposing but at this point you can understand the actual meaning why what benefit we are getting by decomposing the table that you will understand later on when we discuss normalization okay so right now you you get a feel like it is a way of filtering out all the redundant information and you are making the database more efficient uh, so some types of efficient representation you are trying to give okay so some kind of decomposition of the tables are happening in normalization but why it is and how it is beneficial for us we will see later okay so that about it yeah thanks for watching uh, so with this uh, let me wind up that uh, design process so this this is something i find uh, useful so this is a complete picture of the things that we we are going to discuss okay so one by one we will explore in our uh, upcoming videos yeah thanks for watching